Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to continue our discussion on electrons. Specifically, we're going to discuss electron configurations and orbital diagrams. Those are fancy words of saying we're going to learn how to assign locations to specific electrons or to figure out where are they located, where is their specific address on the electron, in the, in the electron cloud. Um, please make sure today you have available both your periodic table and your orbital diagram handout, which is on the back of your unit conversion table or your reference table. Okay, today's essential question. How are the electrons arranged around the nucleus? Energy and electrons. Energy and electrons are, are very, very related, and we're going to spend um, the rest of the unit showing that relationship. Okay, so in nature, change goes towards the lowest possible energy. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about chemistry, if we're talking about electrons, if we're talking about trees or people or, or DNA or anything. Change goes towards the lowest possible energy. And this is because high energy systems are unstable. Um, let me give you a quick example. Um, if you've ever seen a little kid after at the end of the night on Halloween, um, they've been eating all that candy and everything. What are that, what's that kid like at the end of the night? Chances are the little one is running around like crazy, possibly crying, whatever. Why? Too much candy, too much energy, unstable child. So, in nature, as well as chemistry, um, unstable systems lose energy to become more stable. So th that kid that's running around and crying and being all crazy is really trying to use up energy to become a more stable child. Okay? In the atom, electrons and the nucleus interact to make the most stable arrangement possible. And the most stable arrangement is going to be the one with the lowest possible energy because higher energy systems are not stable. The ways in which electrons are arranged around the nucleus of an atom are called electron configurations. And that's what we're going to learn how to do today. All right, here we go. Orbital diagrams, which are related to electron configurations. Normally, they're the first step of writing electron configurations. All right, there are three rules to tell you how to find the electron configurations of atoms. And just so you know, you need to know the name of the rule. Um, you need to know what the rule says, as well as how to apply the rule. All right, the first rule is called the off-bow principle. Off-bow states that electrons enter orbitals of lowest energy first. Um, and if you recall, energy levels are arranged so that the, the lowest number is the one closest to the nucleus, and that's the one that take, contains less energy, which means that according to off-bow, um, electrons are going to enter energy level 1 first, and when energy level 1 is full, then they'll go to energy level 2, and when that one's full, then energy level 3, and so forth. Okay, next is... The orbitals within a sublevel of a principal energy level always have the same energy. What? Okay, that sounds really crazy. Um, worry not. Write that down, think about it, and we're going to get back to it. And it won't sound nearly as crazy as it just did. Okay, within a principal energy level, the S sublevel is always the lowest energy sublevel. Okay, so just like with the energy levels, you, the lowest energy is 1, the second lowest energy is energy level is 2 and 3 and so forth, um, sublevels also have a hierarchy of energy. So S sublevel is, has the lowest energy, and then you've got the D. No, sorry, the S sublevel is the lowest energy, and then the P, and then the D, and then the F. Okay, so that's Aufbau's principle. Next is called the Pauli Exclusion Principle. Pauli says that two, but no more than two, electrons can occupy a single orbital. So either one or two electrons can occupy an S or a P orbital, or truthfully, a D or an F as well. All right, and then we've got another crazy concept here. Chemists believe that electrons spin. 
And they further believe that if two electrons are in the same orbital, they must spin in opposite directions. Why would that be the case? Well, an orbital is just a little tiny spot. It's like two electrons being shoved up against each other on a love seat. Think about it. Electrons, negative charge. Do, elect do negatives like negatives? They don't. They don't like to be that close together. So here's what they do. We've got an electron here. And he is spinning in um, this direction. Okay. This spinning creates a magnetic field around the electron, allowing a partial positive field towards the top of the electron and a partial negative field towards the bottom of the electron. When the next guy comes, the next electron comes and hangs out, sits next to him on the love seat, um, this electron is spinning in the opposite direction leading towards a partial negative charge on the top of the electron and a partial positive charge on the bottom. And this arrangement allows these two negative electrons to be close together. Because of Pauli's exclusion principle and this idea that electrons need to spin, um, when we're drawing electrons in orbital diagrams, we need to show their spin. And trying to draw something like this every time um, can really end up being sort of a pain. So chemists came up with a short version way to, to write electrons and show their spin direction. And we do that by showing an up or a down arrow. Okay, so this is showing this electron is spinning in some certain direction, I don't know, and this one's spinning in the other. And the last rule is called Hund's rule. Um, and Hund's rule is the rule that's most often broken um, when trying to draw orbital diagrams. So keep that in mind. Um, be careful with this one. So when electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy, um, one electron enters each orbital until all the orbitals contain one electron with parallel, parallel meaning the same, spin. Then the second electrons go by and add into each orbital so that their electrons are paired with the first electrons, meaning opposite spins. One thing that helps me remember Hun's rule is just sort of think about people. Um, if, a, if a handful of people are in a room, say a living room or something where there's a bunch of couches, um, usually the first person sits down and when the next person comes to sit down, they don't sit right next to the first person. Nobody likes to be squished up. They're gonna spread out around the room. As more and more people arrive to the room though, that's when the people need to start pairing up, squishing together on the couches. It's the same with the electrons. They prefer to be separated. And as long as they don't have to um, exert more energy to be separated, they'll do that. So as long as the orbitals are all within the same amount of energy, they're going to spread out and they won't start squishing up or pairing up until they don't have a choice. All right, it's just about time to start learning how to draw orbital diagrams and learning how to apply these three rules. All right, so now let's talk about your orbital diagram handout, how to read it, how to use it. Um, and I guess the first thing we should do is uh, try to um, explain all of these little symbols and stuff here. So um, the box I just highlighted, we'll, we'll uh, discuss that to begin with. So I'm going to redraw it in a little bit of a different direction. So we've got two. We have a P. And we've got some boxes here. So this two is representing the energy 
level. Remember that energy levels are represented by numbers. The P is representing the sublevel. And the boxes represent the orbitals. And as we can see, a P sublevel has three orbitals. And then the electrons would then be arrows in the orbitals. Okay, and you'll notice that I just followed Hun's rule. I put three electrons in energy level um, two sublevel P, but only one in each orbital. And then I could go back and fill in more. So the red are the electrons. And um, a couple other terms you should know is this here, those are paired electrons because they're, they're a set, right? You've got one spinning in one direction, one spinning in the other direction in the same orbital. Those are paired electrons. These two here are unpaired electrons. While it's true there's two of them, so you could think of them as a pair, they're not paired. Right? It's like if just because I have two shoes, I may or may not have a pair. Right? I might have a blue tennis shoe and a brown work boot or something. That's two shoes. They're not a pair. Same thing with the electrons. Two doesn't necessarily mean a pair. A pair of electrons is when you have two electrons in the same orbital with opposite spins. Okay, so one more time. These guys here are paired, and these two here are unpaired. All right, so now let's try to do this. I take it back. We've got a little bit more to go over here. First of all, um, I don't know if you can see this arrow here. This is denoting increasing energy. So the energy is, going, is getting greater as you move up. So following off Bow's rule, that would mean that the electrons would start in energy, fill up energy level one, sublevel S. After that was full, they would then proceed to energy level two, sublevel S. And from there, they would proceed to energy level two, sublevel P. And when energy level two was completely filled, they would proceed to energy level three, sublevel S, and then energy level three, sublevel P, and then energy level four, sublevel S, and I'm gonna stop. Hopefully you get the point. Okay, now let's try to do this. Okay, we'll start by writing an orbital diagram. And from there, I'll show you how to write an electron configuration. Okay, so we'll use, as our example, we'll start with lithium. That's a pretty easy one. So um, if you could look at your periodic tables and um, tell me how many electrons lithium has. Lithium has three electrons. So now we gotta figure out where can those three electrons go? Remember we're starting at the lowest energy level, which is 1s, and the first electron will go into 1s, as will the second electron. The third electron will then go into 2s. So to write the orbital diagram, we're gonna write 1s, and I usually just draw a line instead of a box because I find it easier, and we'll put two electrons in 1s and one electron in 2s. That takes care of all the electrons in lithium, so we've just written the orbital diagram for lithium. So now, how do we write the electron configuration? Well, the electron configuration um, is almost the same as the orbital diagram, gives you almost the same information, the only thing electron configuration leaves out is the actual orbitals, okay? It shows the energy level, like the one or the two. It shows the sublevel, this case S and S, and it shows you the number of electrons, but does not show you the exact orbitals. 
So we're going to write energy level 1, sublevel S, with 2 electrons. Energy level 2, that's not a 2. Energy level 2, sublevel S, with 1 electron. And this is the electron configuration for lithium. Let's try another one. Let's try nitrogen. How many electrons does nitrogen have? Nitrogen has seven electrons. Okay, so let's go back to our orbital diagram handout and see where those electrons are going to be located. Okay, so we're going to start with 1s again. We can put 2 here. Then we'll proceed to 2s where we can put two more. That's four electrons. We need space for three more electrons, which means we're going to have to go up to 2p. So we'll start with 1s and we can put two electrons in there. And then we'll go to 2s, which will have two more electrons. And then we'll go to 2p, which how many orbitals does uh, p have? p has three orbitals, so we need to draw all three. And then following Hund's rule, the anti-squishy rule, remember they don't want to be squished up, we're going to put electrons in, in individual different orbitals with the spinning in the same direction. And... So there you go, and that gives us our total of seven electrons. So now, to write the electron configuration, we're going to have 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. So there is the electron configuration for nitrogen. Last one. Let's try oxygen. This time, if you could do me a favor, hit pause. Try to do the whole thing by yourself. Hit play, see how you did. Okay, so oxygen has eight electrons. So we can put two here and two here. That makes four. And we need four more, which can go here. So we're going to use 1s2, 2s2, and 2p. So 1s with two electrons. 2s with two electrons and 2p, three orbitals. We need four more electrons. So one, two, three, and four. So the orbital diagram for oxygen looks like that. The electron configuration would then be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. And as a quick review, what do we call those two electrons versus those two? Well, the first two are called paired. And these guys are called unpaired. All right, that's it for now. Have a good one.